guys happy first Friday or happy first chapter Friday read today I'm going to read to you from the library card by Jerry Spinelli chapter one mongoose fingers trembling eyes on the man at the cash register mongoose snatched the Milky Way bar and stuck it in his coat pocket he waited for lightning to strike for the hand of God to frizzle him on the spot the earth to open and swallow him up cops at least nothing nothing but himself standing in front of the candy section of the mini mart feeling like a dope he couldn't believe he was fooling anybody just look like you're checking out the stuff weasel had said like you're trying to decide what you want to buy right so here he was scratching the back of his head and putting the stupid now what do i want to buy look on his face meanwhile stuffing a candy bar into his pocket and nothing happened the world took no notice, so he grabbed a handful of Milky Ways and stuffed them, and some Butterfingers and Almond Joys. Bring your coat with the biggest pockets, Weasel had said. It was good advice. A handful of Snickers, Baby Ruth. Two aisles over, he could see Weasel's red ski cap bobbing behind the pastries. M&Ms and Tootsie Rolls. Now the red cap was moving down the aisle, past the sodas and pretzels towards the door. Time to go. They met at the cash register. They walked past the man, cool, casual, not looking. Don't look at him, Weasel had been firm about that, though Mongoose mightily wanted to. Outside, the November air splashed cold on their faces, and Mongoose knew, Mongoose knew that he'd been sweating. They walked to the end of the block. The moment they turned the corner, as if on signal, they ran, raced up the street, tensions bursting into howls of laughter. They did not stop until they reached Mongoose's apartment house. They went up six flights of stairs and then one more to their favorite place, the roof. They strutted, they swaggered, they posed. They went to the edge and looked over the town and threw their fists in the air. It's ours, Weasel crowed, it's ours. Except for the clock tower and the bank on Main Street, the roof of Mongoose's place was the highest spot in town. Mongoose, his arms still thrust into the night sky, turned to Weasel and said, What do you mean it's ours? Just what I said. If we can walk in there and walk out with half that stuff, we can do anything. Nothing can stop us. Weasel shouted to the rooftops, We ain't little no more. Mongoose grinned, Yeah. Weasel was right. That was the whole point of this night. The new names, everything. They were not little anymore. They had both had birthdays, their 12th, in October, and they both had begun to notice the same things happening. People were smaller, or seemed so anyway. Their teacher, their parents, older kids, grown up, suddenly they were not the danger they used to be. And neither were their weapons, detentions, groundings, scoldings, rules, threats. Nothing and no one was as big or as fearsome as before. They had both felt this, but they had felt it separately, for neither had the words to express it. And then one day in school, the teacher called on Weasel during geography and asked him a question about Mexico, and Weasel said, I don't know. Now, Weasel was never the greatest student in the world, and he had been saying, I don't know, to teachers for the past six, seven years, counting kindergarten, except he never really said it. He mumbled it, I don't know, with his face somewhere down around his shoes. Mumbled it, mangled it, I don't know, so bad it took each new teacher weeks to understand. Substitutes never did. And lo and behold, here was Weasel in November of sixth grade, straight as a drill sergeant, looking at the teacher and saying the same thing, the same thing he'd been saying all his life, only now saying it loud and clear, as anything you'd hear on TV, proclaiming it, I don't know. The teacher, Mrs. Pocopson, blinked and even smiled a little, probably so sharp to hear the real words come out of his mouth. Normally, when Weasel said he didn't know, Mrs. Pocopson would ask someone else. This time, she didn't. This time, she took one step away from the blackboard and said, You don't know? No said Weasel, almost calling it out, and then repeating it, I don't know, stopping after each word. It was as if he just discovered language, 
and I never did. Mongoose heard Snickers. He looked back and forth between the teacher and his best friend. He'd never seen Weasel sit so tall or so straight. Mrs. Pocopson's eyebrows practically shot up to her hairline. She blinked some more. Is that so? Yeah, said Weasel, and I probably never will. Snorts of laughter erupted. You're dead, thought Mongoose. But Weasel wasn't dead, only suspended. Mrs. Pocopson sent him to the principal's office, and after catching an earful of Weasel's new lip, the principal sent him packing for two days. It was like throwing Br'er Rabbit into the briar patch. Weasel roamed around town, throwing candy wrappers in his wake, simmering in the juices of his new point of view, becoming Weasel. During morning recess on the second day, he showed up at the playground and was mobbed by students. Many wanted his autograph. On that day, Weasel returned. Mongoose was there when a little kid, a third or fourth grader, came up and shook his fingers scoldingly and said, Oh, Bobby! So far, Weasel had become Weasel only to himself. The rest of the world still knew him as Bobby Morgan. Ooh, Bobby, you're going to get in trouble. You better be good. Weasel laughed and swatted the kid's finger away. I don't got to be nothing. I ain't even here. The little kid planted his feet. He glared at Weasel. You are so here. Weasel wagged his head and grinned. No, I ain't. Not no more. He brushed the kid aside and walked into the classroom, leaving the kid baffled. Mongoose wasn't baffled. He understood why Weasel had wised off to the teacher. He thought he himself did not have the nerve to wise off. He did feel like it, though. Things had changed. And if he and his best pal had moved to a different place, he wasn't exactly sure where they were. But like Weasel, he knew they were not where they used to be. That night, they had met on the same roof. They had flung words into the darkness, and like fireworks, the words had burst and showered their future with light. They saw the mini mart. They saw the spray paint can. They saw the cars. They saw freedom. And since they were new, they gave themselves new names. Bobby Morgan had become Weasel. Jamie Hill had become Mongoose. Why are you calling yourself a bird, said the new Weasel. It's not a bird, said the old Jamie Hill. It's an animal, and it's quicker than a cobra. Jamie Hill had always liked to think of himself as quick. Library card. Happy reading.